Right now, I am gonna show you how to cool down your wart really fast. I mean really fast. I mean like instantly. So right now, I'm just at the end of my boil here with a two gallon batch of beer. Now the actual boil volume is only nine cups and we've had some boil off here. So basically, for this to work, what you're going to do is you're going to combine your boiling wort with cold water. So you've got hot water and you've got cold water. You're gonna mix those together to combine in a third liquid, which is going to be at our target temperature for pitching yeast. So I did some math here and I calculated it at that I want the final temperature to be between 65 and 75 degrees, which is great for pitching my yeast. So at this point, what I've already done that I'm not gonna show you here is I already cooled down some water. So yesterday I boiled 26 cups of water to sanitize it, sterilize it, make it really clean. Then I just let it set on the stove covered for the rest of the day until it cooled down. Then I put it in my fermenter and put it in the refrigerator. So now it is at 40 degrees. Now my boiling wart here, I'm at high altitude. I'm at 6,000 feet. So water boils at different temperatures at different altitudes. So at my altitude, this water is 200 degrees at boiling. At low altitude, at sea level, it's 212 degrees. So I've got a math equation that you can use to calculate how much water you're going to need of each. But basically, it comes down to a ratio. So I've done the math here at high altitude. For 200 degree hot water, what you need is one to four and one thirds cup. So for every one cup of hot water that you have, you need four and one thirds cup of cold water. You combine those two together and you're gonna be between 65 and 75 degrees, really, really close to about 70 degrees is really what I'm shooting for. This is a simple beer. All I did was use nine cups of water. I had two pounds of malt extract. I had one pound of light malt extract one pound of dark malt extract, and I used a half an ounce of fresh hops that I actually grew in my garden. All right, you ready to do this? So all I have to do now is get my cold water out of the refrigerator. And my boiling water is gonna go right into it. Again, I'm gonna take the temperature here. We should be at about 39 to 40 degrees. So I've just got my thermometer in there. I'm gonna turn off the stove here and I'm gonna get ready to pitch the two liquids and combine them together here. First thing I wanna do is get my hops out here. So I'm just gonna quickly drain those. That'll do it there. The temperature's going down on the thermometer there. And Oh, that smells good. Those hops smell delicious. Get a whiff of those. All right, so here we go. It's got boiling wort, you can see it there. And we're going right into our cold water here. And then before I get too rowdy here, I want my sterilized mixing utensil here. I'm gonna put it in some sanitizing solution here and just make sure it's nice and sanitized before I get going here. So I'm gonna put that in here. And nothing fancy here. The wart goes right into the cold water. Stir it up here. And we'll 
take that out there. I'll bring you over here so you can check it out here. Oh, oh no, I got my thermometer all the way in there. Hopefully that didn't ruin it. I'm not supposed to let it go all the way in. So, there we go. Now, we're pretty close, okay? So we're actually at 79 degrees. All right, so I know it went wrong here. I calculated more boil off. I didn't boil off as much warts as I thought I would. I thought I would boil off about 50%. I didn't boil off quite that much. So I had more hot warts than I thought I was gonna have. It's okay, sweetheart. Are you out of grapes? <gasps> My daughter's out of grapes. Hold on, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Disaster averted. We did get the grapes. So Again, my problem was that I had too much hot wart, and uh, the math will always get you every single time. So I do have a little bit more cold water that I had just in case I had this problem. So again, this comes out of the fridge, it's at 40 degrees. This is another 16, almost 17 ounces. We're just gonna go right into the fermenter again here. This is purified clean water and I think that might about do the trick and get us down to where we need to be. Closer to my target temperature. All right, so that did the trick and brought us down to 75 degrees here and that'll do it so I can pitch my yeast now and that's it so I'm gonna pitch the yeast and this will ferment just like a, a regular bath for two weeks and I'll bottle it and it'll be ready to rock. So how cool is that? Bringing your wart down to yeast pitching temperature super fast, super easy. The only prep that I had to do again was yesterday I had to boil some water and sterilize it and make sure it was good to go. And that was really easy. I didn't have to pay attention to it that much. Just filled up the water that I needed, put it on the stove, got it up to boiling, turned it off and forgot about it basically for the rest of the day. This is gonna change my life. Again, as you heard, I'm a busy dad, but I love to brew. And cooling down my wort is the hardest, longest, most challenging thing that I have to do when it comes to home brewing. There's a couple things that I really don't like about the cooling process when it comes to the wort. Waste is one of them. You've gotta waste a lot of water if you're using a wort chiller. That copper tube goes in there, you're running a lot of water through it. I don't have a garden or any way to repurpose that water really, so it just runs down the driveway into the street and I'm wasting a lot of water. If I make an ice bath, then I gotta use my sink for the rest of the day. It takes two hours for it to cool down in an ice bath, and that's really frustrating as well. So this way is a really good way for me as a busy home brewer to bring my wart down to a yeast pitching temperature. The drawback is, is that you've got to do a lot of math and you really got to prepare for it. It's not hard work, but you do have to do some extra preparation. And then when boiling, you've got a small amount of water and a high volume of sugar. So the tendency for it to boil up and bubble up is a lot more. So a lot more bubbles. Oh, here, before I get too rowdy here, I got to check the gravity. So I'll steal a little bit of that and... That's gonna do it. So this is gonna make a nice, I think a brown ale there. It's got a good color, I, I like it. It's got a good smell, I really like my fresh hops. It 
Yeah. Mm. I think that's going to be good. So that'll do it. I'll check the gravity here and then, you know, I'll do a, a final video on the tasting of this beer and let you know how that goes. And, you know, I'd really love to hang out more and talk, but I think that's all I got to say. So very, uh, I'm very thankful for you joining me. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel to get an update on this beer and see all the other videos that I do, I really do like mini kegs. So I've got a lot of videos on how I utilize mini kegs and I'll be sure to post more videos of my home brewing. So good luck brewing. Thanks again. My name is Drew Smith. I'll see you next time. Oh, sorry, and finally, before I forget, I want to let you know that I did post the formula in the description on this video, and I wrote a very long blog post about it at homebrewtutorials.com. So if you want to do the math, if you want to create your own formula and plug in the numbers yourself, you can do that, and I will post a link in the description of this video.